Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, visiting with us today at the Capitol, and I think back over top of my head in the gallery above me is Mr. John Bassett, the Chief Executive Officer of Vaughn Bassett Furniture, his son Doug Bassett, who is the Chief Operational Officer of Vaughn Bassett, Jeb Bassett, who is Executive Vice President of Bassett Furniture, and Joe Crawford, who is the CEO of Steel Dynamics in Roanoke. Mr. Speaker, I hope you will welcome these distinguished guests to Mr. Jefferson's capital. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, the reason that the distinguished guests are here today so we just came from a meeting with Governor McDonald on the third floor. I've known John Bassett, Doug Bassett, and Jeb Bassett all my life. Doug and Jeb and I used to play together when we were kids. John's wife, Pat, was my choir director at church when I was a kid. We've known one another for a long time. I am very proud of John Bassett and Doug Bassett and Vaughn Bassett because they are one of the few furniture companies, manufacturers that have managed, Mr. Speaker, to keep jobs in the United States and not sending them overseas. But Mr. Speaker, all of that is in great peril and jeopardy, and the reason that they were here today is they met with me and other members from the Southwest delegation with Governor McDonnell a few minutes ago to talk about electric power rates. Mr. Speaker, a few days ago, the Commerce and Labor Committee considered House Bill 639, which was my bill, to bring back the old regulation that was in place for decades in this state. Mr. Speaker, the committee did not report that bill. And I am disappointed to say, Mr. Speaker, that the reason that that bill wasn't reported is there was a back room deal cut for this bill not to come forward. And the reason that there was a backroom deal, Mr. Speaker, is there, uh, the other bill that we passed out of here, Delegate Carrico's bill to roll back the interim rate increase, would go forward. And while maybe that's as fine as far as it goes, Mr. Speaker, the average residential customer would see a rate cut of only $15 a month and only for a period of several months until August when the permanent rate increase would be put in. So basically what we've done, Mr. Speaker, we've sold out the citizens and the businesses of Southwest Virginia for 15 pieces of silver. And if you don't believe me, Mr. Speaker, it's been reported about 15 times in the news media about this backroom deal. From the Roanoke Times, part of the deal in hammering out the emergency rate relief bill was an understanding between top lawmakers and utility executives that the state would maintain the regulatory status quo. From the news in advance, APCO officials took the offensive by agreeing to suspend the rate increase until August if the legislature will kill any other legislation that would impose tougher rules on the company. They're calling that a compromise. Some folks may want to call it something akin to bribery. And APCO spokesman Dan Carson said the action would be a deal breaker if the General Assembly were to accept the subcommittee's approval of tougher regulations. Mr. Speaker, we've traded the cow for magic beans when my bill, HB 639, came before the subcommittee, they voted 7 to 2 to report the bill. Over the next 48 hours, the dark suits descended on the General Assembly building, Mr. Speaker. And within 48 hours, the tone and the tenor and what went down in the Commerce and Labor Committee changed. 
Some members made comments and speeches that parroted almost word for word the talking points I heard the power companies making in the 48 hours before the committee meeting. Some said that many of the regulations from the 2007 law are not yet in effect and we should just let this problem work itself out. But the truth is that APCO has asked for 10 rate increases since 07, and many of those are increases that they would not be eligible for as separate dollar-for-dollar -dollar returns under the old regulations which my bill would have returned us to. Instead, the 2007 law removes all discretion the SCC has regarding these rates and requires them to give APCO a guaranteed dollar-for-dollar -dollar return. Mr. Speaker, I heard in the committee over and over, well, Ward, you can't guarantee that your bill and a return to the old regulations would result in a decrease. Well, you won't believe me. Will you believe Ted Morrison? who was a judge on the SCC. I called him up over the weekend, Mr. Speaker. Let me read you portions of the email he sent me yesterday. Delegate Armstrong, this is in response to your request for my views relative to electric utility legislation introduced at the current session of the General Assembly. For many decades, traditional regulation by the State Corporation Commission under Chapter 10 resulted in retail rates to consumers that were significantly lower than the national average. Yet Virginia's formerly four investor-owned electric utilities were financially strong and pro provided safe, reliable service. Our sister states of West Virginia and North Carolina, after starting down the deregulation road, simply returned to traditional cost of service regulation. Logical, since the original model wasn't broken in the first place. Instead, Virginia passed in 2007 a major amendment to the Restructuring Act which guaranteed that rates to retail customers would be higher than they needed to be. He said, I would remind you that I made this statement before the House Commerce and Labor Committee in 2007. Had Harvey Morgan's Bill 3050 been passed instead in 2007, the outcries you're hearing from constituents would be substantially muted. Mr. Speaker, at the end of the day, it's about money. I have in my hands the American Electric Power Industries fiscal report ended 2009. Gross profits for fiscal 2009 increased 63.6 million, up from 96.8. That's an increase of 70%. 70%. The increase in operating expenses incurred primarily due to higher salaries and employee-related costs, including stock options. I rather suspect, Mr. Speaker, that there's not too many people in the bucket working on the lines getting stock options. And I can tell you who else isn't getting any stock options. The 20 percent of my constituents that are unemployed. It's about money, Mr. Speaker, plain and simple. Mr. Speaker, we're going to pass an awful lot of bills here in a few minutes. Bills on guns, bills on ethics reform, bills dealing with what I call the minutia of government. But Mr. Speaker, we have neglected the single most important issue to the businesses and the residences in a huge part of this state. Vaughn Bassett's electric bill for one month is $100,000, $1.2 million a year. It's going to put people out of work. Which is why, Mr. Speaker, that I wish to undertake the extraordinary motion under Rule 81 that the Committee on Commerce and Labor be discharged and House Bill 639 come to the floor, and I do so move you, Mr. Speaker.